Hey everybody, Ron Ray here, and today I want to showcase my Shadow Dagger Low Life Blade Dancer build. As you can see on the screen, the build is pretty tanky. It can sustain big amount of damage from normal monsters, even in higher corruptions. It can tank some of big hits from Shadow of Orbeez in 500 and more corruption as well. Even the hits like Meteor that pretty much should be one shots. It's also doing a pretty decent damage as well. You can push Corruption pretty far and you can push Arena as well. So let's go forward and I will be able to explain how exactly build becomes that tanky, how we regenerate our ward and how exactly it works overall. Let's go! So generally the build was created to utilize the Death Door passive that Rogue currently has. With Death Door passive you can receive 24% less damage taken while you are at low life. And with that setup, you always will be at the low life. It helps really a lot to survive in different situations, considering you already have a lot of work. And to get the world and to stay on low life, they are going to utilize a few different mechanics as well. So they are using 20% of current health loss per second and 20% of missing health gained as war per second. It's mostly exanguineous body armor and last steps of the living boots. On top of that, we are stacking Cleaver Solution. Cleaver Solution is pretty much the X that will give you an opportunity to get intelligence equal to your STR. With all of that together, we are receiving a lot of word retention and a lot of word generated per second. And we can stay on big amount of word, around 8000 and up to 12,000 with perfect items. We are also stacking a lot of dodge, mostly because of the smoke weaver, but also because we receive additional dodge bonuses when we are using our passives. All of that together creates a pretty special character that can still do damage, mostly based on Shadow Dagger ability. Shadow Dagger ability is pretty much a passive. Every time an enemy is attacked by your special skills, you are stacking Shadow Dagger passives on them. So when it reaches 4 stacks, it deals damage and always critically strikes. So that way we can stack Critical Strike Multiplier without stacking Critical Strike Chance. So talking about our passives, we can directly stack Shadow Dagger, but we can stack different abilities which will help us to deal more damage with it. First is Shadow Cascade. We are not really using Shadow Cascade from our panel, but we are still benefiting from it because we are using it at the end of every shift. In the passives we are going for Onslaught right here to refine some mana, because of the Shadow Cascade itself. Fighting the Shadows provide even more mana per Shadow, and I think it's pretty great. We are going up here for Incapacitate for Frailty Chance. Uh, right here we are receiving Dagger Dance, that way we are losing our melee attack, but we are adding daggers to the Shadow Cascade itself. Together with Shadow Elegance, it can help us to stack Shadow Daggers on enemies. And Dagger Flow here will pretty much make sure that we are hitting more enemies on the screen. In the left, we are taking Shadow Flourish, because that way we can receive more physical damage overall, including bonus to our Shadow Dagger. Moving to the Shift. In the Shift, we are mostly using it for mobility and mana regeneration. For mana regeneration, we will need Swift Recovery, because that way we are receiving 48 mana every time, since we are always on low health, and it will help our mana sustain pretty greatly. We are also taking Shadow Sleep, because that way we are invulnerable. Consumed by Shadow is an amazing way to just call and strike your enemies when their health is below 16%. And they're also taking Hidden Blades because that way we can stack Shadow Dagger while we are blinking through enemies. And they're doing it constantly. The second important part of the shift is going down there for Dancing Shadows because that way we are going to trigger our Shadow Cascade every time. So go here first because it's the most important part of the shift after mana. Moving to Umbral Blades, Umbral Blades is pretty much here just to use passively as well. Umbral Remnant right here uh, will give us Umbral Blade every time when our shadow expires. And after that we are using blades that will spin in place. It calls a Blade Storm and it will help us to stack Shadow Daggers. Because of the little darkness, we can inflict Shadow Dagger on every enemy that pretty much hit it by Umbral Blades and by the Blade Storm itself. We're also taking Steel Torrent for Blade Storm duration, Blade Storm area, and 
obviously a war fan as well because blade storms will pretty much move around and chase the enemies to the right i'm taking jacked car wings because that way will just do a little more damage by itself and that's the same reason why i'm taking thought thief and you can also take a physical to cold move for umber blades itself but i'm not really a big fan of it and i don't really think it freezes often enough to even bother. Precision cuts are pretty much great as well because of throw at the target location bonus if you are going to throw shed umbral blades itself. If you are not really going to do that and just going to use ones from the shadows, it's not really that important. After that we are using smoke bomb. Smoke bomb is pretty important to help us stack more damage for our shadow daggers. The most important part here is smoke blades. That way, while we are inside, we will get the bonus for melee and throwing damage. Both of those bonuses will increase our shadow dagger damage together. Going up there, we are also getting knives in the dark. That will pretty much give us a chance to apply shadow dagger chance on slow. And well, our shadow bomb is pretty much applying slow pretty frequently. I'm taking also armor shred stacks right here and. It works just fine. After that, you can also take Generosity for a larger area. And up there, that Shroud Frequency together with Shroud and Darkness can help your survivability. Uh, we will be receiving Dust Shrouds each second for 2 seconds while we are staying in the Smoke Cloud. That way, we will have a Glancing Blows, higher dodge rating, and bonuses like that. The most important ability after shift is synchronized strike that way we are going to stack our shadows pretty consistently in the synchronized strike we will need to take perfect coordination because that way shadows will jump inward and it will help us to hit a single target after that we can also take dark allies because it will create more shadows synchronized strike is pretty much the main way right now to create sh shadows itself we're also taking razor strikes because that way we can shred physical resistance please notice that physical resistance is not armor and that's the second level of shred that applied together with armor shred so we need both of them to maximize our damage we're also taking harmony of death for critical vulnerability and umbral assassination because that way we can stack a little but shadow daggers so talking about the rotation generally our synchronized strike costs a lot of mana that way we need to use synchronized and then shift to regenerate the mana synchronized again and then shift again so one synchronized should be always followed by one shift synchronized shift synchronized shift if your shift is on cooldown just wait for it to go back up to use synchronized and then shift again we can also use smoke bomb for single target or if you need some kind of protection and you can use nets to pretty much move back or slow down the enemies if you feel pressured in some situations as the last ability generally we use decoy so using decoy can protect you in some situations as well and feel free to use it especially if you are staying at one place and starting the fight so let's talk about our passive skill 3 we are starting with a rogue and there we will need to take only the basics we are taking Sweet Assassin because physical damage is pretty good for Shadow Dagger. We are also taking Dodge and Parry because that way we will have more chances for Glazing Blow and that will boost our survivability. We are taking Twin Blade because that way we can equip two weapons and it's pretty important. Evasion is a really good bonus because that way we will take less damage while we are moving and we will have increased dodge rating as well. And agility is working as well because that way we can receive increased damage per 1% increased movement speed. It will help us to stack damage based on our movement speed on different items such as boost for example. Moving forward in the Blade Dancer. I'm taking Cloak of Shadows mostly for Glacing Blow chance together with Shroud of Dusk for chances for Shroud and 1.2 Well of the Night just to have some chances to stack Shrouds when they're attacking. 8 point into pursuit pretty great because we are stacking both melee damage and throwing attack damage for shadow daggers we are also receiving moving min speed which will stack our damage as well moving forward aswan pact is pretty great but we are not on the full house so we don't need to invest a lot of passive points here one will be enough 
After that, we are taking perfection. It will help us to do more damage when enemies can't hit us, especially at bosses. Five points in the confidence will help against bosses attacks as well. We are not taking exuberance, because we just can't have full health, and that way we can't have the bonuses from it. Hook blades, on the other hand, will help us with armor shred and armor shred effect. I think one point in the Argent Whale will help as well, because we are always dro dropping below 70% health, and we are receiving Silver Shroud that way. Spellbreaker is pretty much great, because we can get increased mana regeneration and frailty. Shadow Master just needs one point for maximum shadow plus one. Death Door is pretty much the most important part here because that's why we even stand at the low life. It will give us 24%, which is completely amazing, for less damage taken while at low health. And we are always at the low health. Five points into all in will help as well because our shadow daggers are always critically striking and. Because of that, we are needing more multiplier right here. And we don't really care about less damage with non-critical hits, because our hits with Shadow Daggers always critically strike. In the Falconer, I really prefer to take Valdor and Scout for house and dodge rating, together with Stamina of the Rover mostly for even more mana regeneration, mana gain on dodge, and dodge rating itself. And the Raptor Wing, I think completely amazing, it will give you chances to gain haste, uh, it will give you more damage with haste, I think both of them are pretty much worth it. So let's talk about our items. In our items we are mostly prioritizing our ward and ward generation. So Exangunus comes here, you can also get some house up there for more ward, because it helps a lot with survivability. Last steps of the living is pretty much great for the same reason, try to aim for higher percent of missing health gained as work per second, and you can get some health stacked on that as well. At the gloves, pretty much experimental part with current health loss per second and current percent of missing health gained as ward is pretty much the best option too, otherwise you can go for STR and throw in damage. Cleaver solution is pretty important, but try to get at least one LP, because that way you will be able to stack melee physical damage and it will help you heavily with the damage itself. At the Smoke Weaver, you need to prioritize dodge rating. Everything else is not that important, but cooldown recovery speed for shift could be helpful as well. If you can get Smoke Weaver with a few LP, definitely do that. But if not, you can pretty much keep it without LP at all. Uh, at the rings, we will need STR together with the resistances. So try to get physical resistance, elemental resistance, and STR as the most important part. The ring with necrotic resistance is a great option as well. We can stack STR together with critical strike avoidance and health. It will boost survivability. Belt I pretty much recommend to just go with high health and some kind of throwing damage on top of armor on the belt itself. And as a helmet I really like Somnia. Because Somnia is pretty easy to get right now. You can get two LP version and it can provide some ward retention together with a decent armor. Try to get physical penetration with shadow daggers on top of it for the LP version and enjoy the ward retention together with it. At the amulet we will need throwing damage together with health and some kind of resistance. Make sure that your necrotic and physical resistances are high enough and you are reaching your threshold. Moving to the idols, we generally need to stack physical penetration with shadow daggers together with elemental resistance. I think it's the best option currently, and perfectly we will need 4 of those. It will help us to get some elemental resistance down from other items, especially from the rings, and it will make the stacking process easier. Smaller idols, I definitely recommend to go with 5% increased health and 7 or 8 elemental resistance per 1, we can get 1, 2, 3 and 4 of those and all of them are going to give us a lot of elemental, together with increased health, which is really great. Talking about blessings, we need to focus on critical strike avoidance, make sure that you, if your item has 35% critical strike avoidance, you will need at least 65 on your blessing, that way you will be able to reach the threshold. We're also enjoying armor on our first blessing, it helps with survivability decently, we can get chance to shred physical resistance on hit 
or percentage of physical armor right here for the second option. And I really enjoy Void Resistance from Blessing for that build, because that way we can just drop Void Resistance for our items. You will need at least like 65 and higher Void Resistance, and perfectly aim for 75 to reach the cap. Everything else is pretty much Ring Drop Parade, Gold Drop Parade, Ward per second can help you to just get like a little more ward, uh, one handed sword could be alright, or one handed dagger, uh, that's a pretty decent option. Belt shard drop is a pretty nice as well, because that way we can stack more shards that we need. And perfect shard drop rate will help with crafting as well. So that was my low life shadow dagger blade dancer belt. Right now I think it's in a pretty strong position. It can push corruption and it can stay really tanky in all the situations. It's also pretty fast, so you will be able to farm without any issues. Hope you will be able to enjoy it. Please like and subscribe for more content. And see you next time.